Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. The colours on the trees there suggest that we are deep into the autumn now, but the temperatures are saying otherwise. It really has been very mild recently. Last week, I brought up the Central England temperature tracker, which is provided by the UK Met Office, and the anomaly for the month so far was 1.5 Celsius. Since then, it has continued climbing. We're now up to 1.8 Celsius, provisional to the 23rd of October. And if anything, I think that will still rise further through the coming days. Let's jump into the details. And as usual, I'll start with the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 25th. If you watched my video last week, you may think that not a great deal has changed since then, and you would be right. Low pressure still centered to the west of the UK, and a southwesterly flow moving up across all regions. It's bringing showers and longer spells of rain at times, quite windy conditions. The wettest of those mostly in the north and the west, and that really continues to be the case as we head into the weekend. But there will be rain at times in central and eastern England. The details are going to be changing from day to day. Don't focus on those too much on this animation. But there you can see some showery rain, perhaps quite heavy, being suggested in central and eastern counties on Saturday afternoon. But if you are planning activities this weekend outdoors, then keep an eye on the short range forecasts because it's not possible really to be confident about the timing and the easterly extent of some of these bands of showers and rain. Then through into next week, um, Halloween on Monday, it looks quite unsettled in the north and west, maybe drier in the south and the east. By the end of the animation, there are suggestions there of it turning more unsettled in all regions, so low pressure extending its influence further eastwards. But the general profile not changing much at all. The jet stream animation really illustrates the same thing. To begin with, it's this big dip in the Atlantic with the jet stream moving upwards again over the northwest of the UK. And when I run this, there are changes, but taken as a whole through the week, things finish in a very similar setup to how they start. Tuesday the 1st of November, the dip there is stored for west of the UK and that leads to the southwesterly flow across the country. Perhaps, as I say, there the jet stream is strengthening a little bit at the end, indicating a more progressive transition to unsettled weather in all areas. With the southwesterly flow, or southerly flow at times, dominating through the first week, temperatures stay above the average, very much so. Wednesday the 26th of October, 18s or 19s there in central and eastern counties, cooler in the northwest. Also some very, very, very mild nights are possible. Forecast minimums here, 06 GMT, Friday the 28th, not dipping below 14 Celsius in much of southern and central Britain, a little cooler there in the north, but double figures generally really notably warm for late October. Into the afternoon on Friday, very high values once more, 20 Celsius there in East Anglia, quite possibly 21 Celsius being recorded locally. By Sunday, rinse and repeat, it's cooler perhaps in the north, but across much of England and Wales, still really quite anomalously high values. And even by Tuesday, not a great deal to say there at all. Above the average, like temperatures have been for much of the year to date. I think it's worth just mentioning the potential for windy conditions at times. This just illustrates 18 GMT, Friday the 28th. The strongest winds will tend to be in the west, particularly around coastal counties leading to gales at times. I don't think anything particularly out of the ordinary has been suggested at the moment by computer models. After all, at this time of year, it often can be windy and 
changeable with those areas of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic. But all in all, quite breezy in all parts of the UK. But as I say, nothing extreme is currently showing up in the computer models. Rainfall. Days 0 to 5, the aggregate forecast from the European ECM model on the left, the GFS, the United States global model on the right. The pattern they both point towards is for wettest conditions in the northwest. ECM on the left, though, seems to be pushing more active disturbances eastwards across the UK, leading to higher rainfall totals in central and eastern counties. So some significant differences there about the extent of the rain risk in central and eastern England in particular. Moving forward to the 10-day charts, once more, wettest in the west and especially the northwest. ECM continues the same trend, keeping higher rain totals in central and eastern Britain than GFS has, although both of these are suggesting the potential for significant amounts of rain in virtually the whole of the United Kingdom. Differences there in the details, the general theme is similar from both of the uh, deterministic models here, wettest in the north and west through the 0 to 10 day period. Just that uncertainty, I think, about how much rain there will be in central and especially southeastern England. So, how do the deterministic models look when compared to each other at the end of the first week? Here's the GFS, which the animation was based on, Tuesday the 1st of November. High pressure sitting out to the east, low pressure to the west, to the northwest. That southwesterly or southerly flow keeping things warm in much of the UK for the time of the year. Driest here in the central and eastern counties with high pressure having more influence. Moving forwards to the Canadian model at the same time. Very similar, really. High pressure there, centre to the east, low pressure to the west, perhaps having a little bit more influence at this particular moment than it was on the GFS, but the theme is the same. Looking at the German icon, a low, uh, high pressure to the south and to the east, an Atlantic flow there covering the UK, most unsettled in the north and the west, so differences again in the details, but overall quite consistent. European model, very similar. And finally, the UK Met Office, very similar as well. Good agreement, therefore, at the end of week one. It's a changeable or unsettled theme. The Atlantic flow being more active across the north and west of the UK. High pressure maybe still having some influence in central and eastern England. That's where the driest conditions would, would probably be, at least at this point. So, does that general trend continue as we head through week two, or will there be some significant changes? It's all about probabilities and trends, and I'll start with the ensemble plot for London. So it goes out to 16 days ahead, and it's generated from the GEFS model. The air temperature profile across the top in fact, points towards something of a change at last. There is a dip. The ensemble mean, the thick purple line, is trending downwards, and by around bonfire night, it's reaching the thick black line, which is the 30 year average. So, if this is correct, it looks like finally the above average temperatures will be fading away. We could see something more seasonal just in time for the fireworks, maybe. But along the bottom, the rainfall spikes increase. So there is that risk of it being wet through the second week. Impossible at this range to say whether there's going to be rain around on bonfire night or not. But with rather an unsettled pattern becoming established in the southeast, it must at least be a serious possibility. I've got some new charts to uh, show this week. These are forecast mean wind speeds from the GEFS Ensemble. This particular one's for London. I think it's quite a useful chart for the autumn and winter months in particular, where gales can be a major issue. 
at this stage mean win, mean wind speed gusts uh, mean wind speed sorry through uh, the second week of the forecast period between 20 and 30 miles an hour according to most of the individual runs so nothing really notable showing up at this point gust speeds will be higher as i say because these are averages but nothing extreme or worrying at this stage two meter temperatures for london the downwards trend there mirrors what the air mass profile was suggesting the yellows dominant for much of a period 11s to 15 celsius maximums earlier on it's the oranges through week one the 16s to 20s so clearly a sign of it turning cooler or at least becoming closer to the average and towards the end there an increase in amount of a light green those are runs going for maximums of six and ten although when i say an increase in amount they are still in a relatively small minority just peaking at about 35 percent on tuesday the eighth up to manchester the air temperature profile close to average if anything the anomaly here is smaller than it was on the London one and the rainfall spikes across the bottom there suggesting quite a wet picture through the second week wetter and cooler as we head northwestwards also a little bit windier the mean forecast from the runs in the ensemble peaking at around 35 miles an hour but the um, average of all the individual runs significantly lower of course so around 20 but generally low pressure probably having more influence in the northwest of the UK and the west than it is in the southeast and the isobars packing closer together stronger winds on the whole the temperature trend for Manchester very similar to the London one albeit at a slightly lower level so the yellows dominate through the first few days the 11s to 15s but there is more of a light green in the columns the 6 to 10s and it they reach a peak of 55 percent on the 6th of november up to glasgow just to complete the journey northwestwards the air temperature profile close to the average not really a significant anomaly at all on this particular chart if anything later on it's dipping a little bit below that 30 year norm rainfall across the bottom it's looking pretty wet lots of spikes there some of them quite big once more just really reinforcing that suggestion of it being more unsettled and cooler relative to the average as you head further north and west in the uk the wind gusts for uh, wind mean speed mean wind speed sorry for glasgow not gusts the GEFS ensemble I think does not provide gust speeds from all of the individual runs unlike the GFS which is the uh, deterministic model in the suite so sorry for getting confused there and saying the wrong thing but these are mean wind speeds the key thing to note though is they are higher than they were on the London and Manchester plots but again I think nothing out of the ordinary at least showing up at this point two meter temperatures for glasgow the light greens dominate they increase their ascendancy through the first few days peaking there at around uh, 87 percent of the uh, total number so six to ten celsius a little bit of yellow continuing and a little dark green those are going for a maximum of between one and five celsius so those would be pointing towards cold conditions but on the whole I think very close to the average for this part of the country the 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot generated from the all of the individual runs within the ensemble so Friday the 4th of November low pressure maybe just to the south of Iceland high pressure to the south and the east of the UK, west or southwesterly flow covering the country. Most unsettled in the north, the best chance of drier periods in the south. That doesn't look particularly cold at all. A typical positive North Atlantic oscillation pattern. And really, the European ECM ensemble reinforces the view. It's perhaps 
a little bit more amplified at this stage, a bigger dip there to the west. That would tend to lead to more of a southwesterly flow, perhaps temperatures a little bit higher, if anything, than what the GEFS was pointing towards. But at this range, it's just to give the general flavour of how things could be developing unsettled or changeable in all parts of the UK according to both of these computer models. And finally, the 10 to 15 day GEFS pressure anomaly chart. Here's the UK. It's covered by blue shading. That's, that's suggesting a lower than average pressure. So once more, even through days 10 to 15, it looks as though low pressure will be having a good deal of influence. It's an unsettled scenario. Unlikely to be particularly cold, although perhaps if low pressure started to push further east, there could be something of a colder signal beginning to develop. Maybe some polar maritime air getting into the mix across north, the, the north of the UK at times it is something to keep an eye on. So to summarise, Week one, it's changeable. It's going to be very mild or even warm in the south. Temperatures could well reach 21 Celsius locally. All regions can expect rain, but it will be wettest in the west and the north. Quite windy. Gales are most likely in western coastal counties. Week two, unsettled with rain in all areas. Low pressure probably extends its influence further eastwards as we head through week two. So rain totals in central and eastern parts of England also are likely to be increasing. Windy periods remain possible. Nothing out of the ordinary being picked up at this stage by the computer models, but given that it's going into November, gales would not be unusual, especially in the north and the west. After that mild start, temperatures dip back towards the average particularly in the north, and there are some indications that it may become a little bit cold up there towards the very end of the second week. Obviously, at this time of year, that would point to an increasing risk of sleet or snow over the Scottish Highlands, but very, very typical for November. Nothing unusual. So, there we have it. Autumn continues. We're into November, but at least in the short term, temperatures seem oblivious to the calendar. But there are signs of it finally cooling down as we head towards bonfire night. It could be unsettled as well in all parts of the UK by then, so there is that risk of rain, which could put a dampener on the fireworks in some parts of the UK. But at this range, of course, it is impossible to be confident about the details. So stay up to date with the short range forecasts. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.